I knew when I was young, I used to go to hospital and they used to jab me, looking for my vein up and that. That I remember when I was young, maybe about two, three years. Because like every child, they are young, you're trying to understand why can't you play as much as other people? Why can't you go out with your sister as much as she goes out? But as I grew older, the pain, I now realize that, no, this, is, this pain is not just one-off, but it was something that was going to be consistent. Now, if somebody uh, with AS marries another person with AS, there's a 25% chance that the, their child, each child born, will have the sickle cell gene. Nigeria has the highest number in the world. Growing up, I, I had the regular pains, and those pains are not, not something you wish on your enemy. Sometimes even morphine does not even hold that pain down. I had a challenge with my with crisis, they had to be blood transfusion, and in the process I had an infection, and um, I was trying to turn on my bed um, because of bed, bed sores. Normally your nurses are so, when you stay too long in a position, the nurse is supposed to turn you over, but they didn't, and I decided to do it myself, and I had a snap. They rushed me to the um, x-ray place, found that I had dislocated my hip from the socket, hip, so, hip socket. So they had to put me in a POP. I was in a POP for six months. Those were the most depressing months of my life. You know, by then I was seeing my friends. They had gone to university. They were coming out. I was just there. And then I was having this leg issue. I just felt this is not, life is not worth it, you know. Um, I, I felt that since I'm not doing anything, what is there to live for? My biggest fear was just not achieving anything, that I'll just end up dying and not doing anything in my life. And I didn't want that for myself at all. I, I didn't see that for myself. I saw myself doing more, and I wanted to do more, but it was a struggle to get to do more. There are two stages of my life where I fought. One was to get back to school. I really wanted to go back to school. I had a friend who was there to encourage me at every step of the way. And um, I just felt, okay, let me get back to school. So I just, that's when I now got my parents, look, I want to go back. I know I may not be able to go to school properly, but at least get me a teacher. So they got me a teacher to train, teach me in-house. And I did all the courses, jam, work, and went back to school. That was the first turning point in my life. Within that period, I started having this flair for baking. So I'll be selling cakes in, in, in school with my, with my friend, and we'll be selling cake slices, just to have an extra pocket money. And that's how I started the cake business at my confessionaries. I ran that for about 15 years. By that time, this friend Tamara, she was always encouraging me spiritually to look beyond my problems and look to God. So I, there was that searching. But it was during my university years, when I entered university, I, I, I met with God, give my life to Christ, and that was a turning point. Because I now, at that point, I now realized that, yes, we have challenges. Everybody goes through challenges, but it's for a greater purpose, and that is to impact other people. And that's when my perception of what my life would be changed. When I started, stopped seeing myself, I started seeing others. And that with our own challenges, we were able to educate people. Because if I didn't go through this, and I tell somebody with sickle cell, oh, this is the issue, they say, oh, you don't understand. 
they will say you don't understand what I'm going through. You have not gone through it. But because I have gone through it, I'm able to help people more. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made sufficient in weakness. I started this project more than three years back and then put it on hold, not because I was busy, but merely because I did not think I had a story to tell. Once in a while, my thoughts would wonder why I should be writing the book. I kept thinking, who on earth would care to read my story? But the more difficulties I encounter, the more I realized that there was a reason for this project. Thank God for friends who encouraged me. I would not have gotten this far without them. As you listen to this story, I pray it will affect, encourage and bless you beyond your wildest dreams. It is my hope that it will help you look beyond your problems or challenges. And instead, look unto the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who is able to take you out of that pit and bring you to a place of rest. Imagine a river flowing and the river flows and a couple of hundred feet away, it drops into a waterfall, a very deep waterfall. As you swim against the tide, you're going to be struggling because it requires strength. Sometimes you feel as if you're going to drown. And what Toyin has done is that she has realized that there's a helper who can help her ride against that tide and survive drowning and overcome all those obstacles because there's an inner strength in her that keeps her going. Hello there, welcome to another Monday night of inspiration, especially for the women out there and their families. I can't imagine what life without ice cream, without swings and without slides is like. But this lady lived all of that and she's still standing and smiling. Oftentimes you come across books that just stop you in your in your tracks. This is one of such books. And then I read the first chapter and then the second chapter and uh, by the end of the day I had finished the book and I said find me this woman because I couldn't imagine how she just managed to remain still standing. She's here this morning. Her name is Toei. Good morning, Toei. Good morning. How are you? I got a call from somebody that struck me, and he said, oh, and I listened to your um, story and everything on that day, so I show that um, my parents, I want to go to university, my parents don't want me to. They said, I should just sit at home, that you will die soon anyway. And that's what changed my perception of, wow, there's a lot of misinformation around. And then because of the book, other people were coming, telling their stories, sharing their stories, and I realized that the issue of sickle cell has, has not been brought to the fore, and there's a lot of ignorance, which there is still, but it's getting better. So that's when I now, I said, okay, maybe I'll do something, but I was still struggling then. One day, the Lord spoke to me, do this thing, just do it. My perception of running a non-profit was something small, not too much stress, you know, but um, it's a lot of work.
I know what I went through. I know the challenges I went through. I was able to come out of it, but not many people are. So it's the joy of seeing that person. Yes, you have a challenge, but be able to overcome that challenge and make something of themselves. I have a greater passion for young people with sickle cell because a lot of them get depressed, especially after one of us dies. That's when depression sets in again, the fear. Ah, this one died at 20 something. Will I amount? Will I live to that? But I always tell them that you have to battle the mind. Because once you start allowing that thought to come in, you're already letting yourself believe that you're not going to reach this age. You're not going to live. That's why I always encourage people that you have to find something to live for, no matter how small, because that is what will keep you going. For me, I believe 60, 70, 80. Till God decides it's time to come home. I'm driven by God, my faith, uh, my faith in God, and that's why I'm still here. Um, then secondly, just the passion to be able to do things, to achieve things, to know that, yes, I've been able to do something. I've been able to die empty. I've been able to give my all to this project. You know, I've done all sorts of things. I've failed, I've started. And when I look back, if I didn't go through this, I don't think I'll be in this state. So I feel that God always has a purpose. We, we may not like it, we feel that it's not our choice, but He alone knows the end from the beginning. And ultimately, it's for you to see the cup half full and not empty, empty, half empty. You know, it's for you to say, I have this thing, but it does not control me. Like I say, I may have sickle cell, but sickle cell does not have me. And the same thing I want other people to think about, that whatever challenge is, whether it's environmental, whether it's societal, yes, it's there, but it doesn't control you. It's your turn to control it. Yeah, 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 yeah.